Today I'm going to go over modifiers within the new input system. So make sure you have the input system installed in Window, Package Manager, Unity Registry, and Input System. So let's make an input action asset. Right click, create, input actions. I'm going to call it modifiers. Let's just make a map here. And now let's add a modifier. So what exactly is a modifier? Well, it's a type of composite. So if you click add binding here, you'll see that we get these options. So we can add a normal binding but we can also add composite bindings. A composite binding is basically a binding made up of multiple bindings. So for example, you might be familiar with the Vector2 composite binding, 2D Vector Composite. And this is great for the WASD keys or arrow keys where you need the player to move and it should return a Vector2. But instead of making a new action per binding, as so, W and then S, we can make this composite one and assign the separate bindings to up, down, left, and right. And for modifiers, you can only do this on buttons. So you can either do a button here or you can do value and then something that returns a float. So axis, for example, and then we can add here button with one modifier composite or button with two modifiers composite. So let's add the one with one modifier. So a modifier modifies a value. So we have a normal button and then we have a modifier. So this button will only trigger when the modifier is pressed. So for example, if we have a button with the path of W, so let's say that's the walking for the player, then the modifier, we can have a path of shift. And so this will only be performed or triggered when both of these are pressed at the same time. So kind of like a combo of two bindings. And the value that it will return in this case will be the value of the button. It won't return the value of the modifier. This is just here to modify when this button is getting performed. And so, the, and so the modifier works with a button or a trigger of some sort, anything that returns a float. For example, if we have an action of value and integer, you can see that we don't have this option available. And so the source code for the input system is available on their GitHub. And here you see that we have this button with one modifier. So this is what we're using right now. And you'll see that it only accepts a type of float. And you'll see that when we read the value, first it checks if the modifier is pressed and then it returns the value of the button if it is pressed, else it just returns zero or the default value of float. And so similarly to the button with one modifier, we have this button with two modifiers. So this is the same thing, except all three of these have to be pressed in order for the button to be performed or triggered. So maybe in this case, you have the W be the button, the modifier be shift, and then the second modifier be control. So you have to press the shift control and W in order for this to be triggered. So I already have an input action here with some actions. So for the combo one, we have a button with one modifier, shift and W. And for the combo two V two, we have a button with two modifiers and the same example I was showing previously. And so I'm gonna give you a visual example of how this works. So the cube will turn yellow when started, green when performed and red when canceled. So right now I'm pressing W and nothing's happening. But once I press shift, you'll see that the one modifier one starts and gets performed immediately. But when I release the shift, you'll see that it's canceled. Now if I press it again and I release the W, you'll see that it's canceled as well. Now if I press it and I also press control, you'll see that the two modifiers one is active. If I release control, you'll see it's red. If I press it again, it's green. If I release shift, they are now both red. And of course, if I release W, they're both red now. And if you're interested in the script for this, it's pretty simple. Just import the Unity engine.input system namespace. I'm getting reference to the input action and a reference to the box. Then I'm declaring these variables for the colors. Then we have to enable the action and disable the action when the script is enabled or disabled. And here I just subscribe to the event callbacks that started, performed, and canceled. And I change the material of the box to the corresponding color. And I want to show you how to add modifiers via code. So once again, import the unity engine.input system namespace. We can create an input action through code dynamically by calling new input action. And then we can add a composite binding to our input action with dot add composite binding. And to use the button with one modifier, you just put the string here of the class name. And what's cool here is that you can add multiple bindings for the modifier. So for example, this is the button. In this case, it's the number one on the keyboard. And then for the modifier, we can either press the left control or the right control. So this is only one modifier, but we can add multiple bindings to that modifier. And then if you want to add a composite binding with two modifiers, it's very similar. But for the width function here, we have to put modifier one and modifier two, and then assign the corresponding binding that you'd like. 
and make sure to enable your actions. And you can add your own composite binding here, which I'm going to show you how to do. In this case, I've named it custom and it can take a float parameter. And in this case, I'm equaling it to two. And then I'm just setting the first part of this binding to the button south on the gamepad and the second part to the button north. So let's go over this script, which is kind of messy, but ignore the comments for now. Very similar to the one I showed you. First, we have to make sure this is initialized in the editor so you can access it in your input action asset. For that, you have to be using Unity Editor. And then we have these other three namespaces that we have to import. Obviously, we need the input system one, and I'll explain these two shortly. So if we're in the editor, initialize this script. And this is our composite called custom composite. And we have to derive from this input binding composite class. And in this case, we only want to add it to actions that are of type float. And you'll see that we have this display string format here. So this is how you want your binding to appear when the get binding display string is called. And if you didn't know, you can actually call this on your action action dot get binding display string and it will display your binding in a string format. In this case, we want our string to be first part and the second part, which if we scroll down a little, you'll see that we have an integer called first part and second part. So here, this is just formatting the string and taking in those parameters first and second. And for this, we need to import this input system dot utilities namespace. So if you notice, we have this input control layout button here. So this is limiting what this binding can be. So this binding can only be a button. And for this, make sure to import the input system dot layouts namespace. So these are the two parts of our composite, but we can also add some extra variables here. So you can also add anything you want. So in this case, maybe I want a float or a Boolean. And to show you what this would look like, you can actually add here, add custom composite. And once it's added, you can set up these parameters. You'll see that the float parameter shows up here as well as the Boolean. And then first part, and second part, which is pretty cool. So here's the read value that we need to override. So another script can call this value. As you may be familiar, you read the value of your action. In this case, a context is passed in and we do context.read value and we can pass in the integer that we want to read in, which is kind of like the ID. So in this case, we want to read the first and then the second part. And if the first value is pressed, so it equals one, then we return the first part and the second part. Adversely, instead of doing read value float, and checking if it equals to one, you can do context.readValue as button, and you can just wrap that in the if statement instead of doing this and this. But if it's one, we return the first button plus the second button, else we return zero. Or you can just return default, which is zero in this case. Then we have this function called evaluate magnitude that we can override. It's not necessary to override it, but it computes if we're currently actuated on the binding which basically means if this binding is active. And in this case, all we're doing is just returning read value. So we're just calling our function that we made up here and we're passing in the reference to our context. So this computes a normalized magnitude value from zero to one for the current actuation level. And this actually drives the callback context. So if this goes from zero to one, for example, then the action will be started and performed. And if it goes back to zero, it'll be canceled. And so this is a static constructor for our class because we need to pass in this static value of our class, we have to make sure to call input system dot register binding composite and the name of our class. And here, this is called when the game is loaded and this just is an empty function here. So the purpose of this is just to trigger the static constructor when the game is loaded. So here we've added the custom composite with W as the first part and A as the second part. And you can have this extra float and bool, which if you'd like, you can also add it to the read value or do anything you want with them. And so I've made this box here to show you a visual representation of it. So remember it's W and A. So once I press W, it's started and been performed. Why has it been started and performed? Because we press the first part. And if we press the first part, that means we're returning a value that's not zero. Now if I press A, nothing's happening. Again, if I press W, it's one. Now if I press both at the same time, you'll see that it started and then it's performed at one because I pressed W, but it's performed a second time because I pressed A. And since that's a value of one, in this case for the button, since I'm pressing it down, it returns performed two. And I release it and it's zero. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please make sure to like and subscribe as it helps me out a lot. And so I'd like to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It's really appreciated, it helps me out a lot. And with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the enthusiastic tier, we have Larry, George, and Andy. 
Thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access to videos, an exclusive Discord channel, and more. And if you haven't already joined our Discord channel, the link's in the description. You can chat, post memes, or ask questions. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.